Before I get on with the video, I want to point out that in the previous two videos, the green grid in the background, which is very important for showing how the transformation works, was too pale to see. Well, on some screens it showed up fine, but on other screens, like my phone, it's completely washed out. So, I'm going to show the two clips again, but with everything much darker. Here's the classical view of space-time. And here's the warpy view of space-time. All other space-time animations in this video will also be darkened. Gloomy, I know, but it's the small price you have to pay for clarity. What happens when an object reaches the speed of light? Well, first of all, that can't happen because it would require an infinite amount of energy. But let's just ignore that for a bit and hop on board. Think about the transformation. That means we have to use diagonal scaling to get the trajectory of our light speed object to be horizontal. Remember, that's what's required to take on its frame of reference. But just like how horizontal and vertical scaling didn't affect the slopes of horizontal and vertical lines, 1 to 1 diagonal scaling doesn't affect the slopes of 1 to 1 diagonal lines. So no matter what scaling we do, our object's path will still be light speed, not horizontal. But wait, let's think about what it means for a line to be horizontal. That just means every point on the line has the same y coordinate, right? So technically, if we diagonally squish the graph so much that the line becomes a point, we will have technically made it horizontal. But we can't forget about keeping the area constant. Well, our first scaling factor was 0. 0 times what equals 1? Infinity, perhaps? So in this direction, we squished the graph as far as possible, whereas in this direction, we stretched it as far as possible. So this is the universe from the perspective of an object moving at light speed. In other words, this is the perspective of light itself. Some observations. Every position in the whole universe compresses to a single point. That means, from light's perspective, the universe has no width. It's infinitely short. Likewise, after just one year, light will have traveled infinity universes away. Since, you know, a universe's width is now zero light years. For that matter, after just one millisecond, light will have traveled infinity universes away. Therefore, from light's perspective, it takes exactly zero time to pass through the entire universe. That means for light, time does not pass at all. You might be thinking, but light does take time to pass through the universe. It takes one year per light year, in fact. Well, that's just from your perspective. A perspective where the universe actually has both time and distance. Not so in light's eyes. If objects can't move at the speed of light, what does it look like to get really close? Let's look at Leafy as she travels faster and faster, approaching light speed but never quite getting there. As expected, light rays still travel at the speed of light away from Leafy, despite Leafy changing speed. You can see that as Leafy gets close to the speed of light, the other objects are getting closer and closer to each other. The entire universe is shrinking. You can imagine how, if Leafy did go at the speed of light, the objects would get so close they'd just be a single point. Which again is what light itself sees. And I think this is the most compelling reason for why objects cannot go at the speed of light. No matter how fast you go, light always appears to go at around 299,792 km per hour relative to you. Whereas you, obviously, only appear to go at 0 km per hour relative to yourself. No matter how much energy you put in to move forward, you'll always have that 299,792 km per hour gap between you and light. It's like you're running in this giant hamster wheel, but getting nowhere. Well, okay, you say. But I still feel like objects should somehow be able to go faster than light speed. What if Pin starts moving at 60% the speed of light, and then she throws the wind token she's been holding at 60% the speed of light relative to her? 60% C plus 60% C is 120% C, which is faster than the speed of light. And we didn't even break any rules in the scenario we just described. You're right about not breaking any rules, but let's see what really happens when Pin does this. Now, when I created this animation, I didn't know Pin was going to be riding a train. Instead, just realize that Spongy here is our stationary figure, just like the ground. Right now, you can see Pin accelerating up to 60% the speed of light. And now, the wind token will move at 60% the speed of light relative to her, right? Exactly as you described. 
But look at this. From Spongy's point of view, the win token didn't go at 120% C. It only went at 88.2% C, which is still comfortably under the speed of light. Do you see? Velocities don't just add up like simple addition. 60% plus 60% equals 88.2%. I'll go over how that math actually works in part 4. And that's because the second 60% is being piled on top of a different frame of reference, so it's not really identical to the first 60%. And yes, if you imagine more and more objects propelling forward off of each other at faster and faster increments of 60% C, they will get closer and closer to C, but never quite get there. You ask, well okay, but what if Fiery and Kony are floating in space, pretty much staying still relative to each other, and then they slap each other so hard they fly away from each other at 80% the speed of light? Surely the gap between the two will now grow at 160% the speed of light, so from either person's perspective, the other is receding at 1.6c. What happens here? Did I finally manage to break the speed of light this time? Well, let's just run that scenario through the simulator. To give some more reference points, Spongy will stay put at ground zero, and the slap will release one light speed photon in each direction. Let's see what happens. From Fiery's perspective, even after the slap, Koini is still receding ever so slightly slower than the speed of light. You can see this because the photon of light, which always travels at light speed, is slightly outpacing Koini. Another interesting feature? From Spongy's perspective, Koini and Fiery are always the same distance away, traveling at the same speed. But from Fiery's perspective, Spongy and Koini are actually very far away but close to each other. This also has to do with the fact that they're aging slower. Since you insist, here's the same situation but from Koini's perspective. Everything's the same really because it's symmetrical. But I hope you learned that you didn't actually break the speed of light. The reason is the same as before. Velocities just don't add up like simple addition. Here, we're doing subtraction instead, but the idea is the same. Still, it baffles me that no matter what configuration of movements you create, no object will go faster than the speed of light. That just doesn't seem intuitive. But if you want to see two more stories involving objects with limbs, which are more complex and really push this simulator to its limits, then check out part 4, where I show you just that. Also, I'll try to derive an equation using the, um, geometry of the transformation. I'll see you then. Since